what we can confirm for, for now is that um, a well-known uh, musician, 35 years old, and his bodyguard who was said to be 84 years old, was shot and killed in Hollywood on Florida Road uh, on Friday night. What we have for now is that uh, the musician and uh, his uh, security detail were having um, supper in a restaurant. So as they were leaving the, for their vehicle, um, two unknown gunmen uh, came across the street on foot and opened fire on them, giving them instant Nobody was already injured apart from the uh, uh, two uh, men who were killed. It is early stage, but we will be investigating two counts of murder and um, with the hope of finding the, the, the culprits and uh, bring them to justice. Kenan Jared Forbes was born in Cape Town, South Africa on the 28th of January 1988 to mom Lynn and dad Tony. Lynn was 19 years old when she fell pregnant with Kenan while she was still studying towards her educational degree at the University of Western Cape. Soon after finding out that she was pregnant, she and Tony married and she finished out her degree and subsequently went on to become a teacher. Most people call him Keenan, but he has actually clarified that his name is actually pronounced as Keenan because his father loves sports and he actually named him after a rugby player. Mm. Five years later, in 1993, the couple welcomed another boy that they named Stefan. After Stefan's birth, Lynn left her career as a teacher and became a full-time stay-at-home mom, raising her two boys. By all accounts, the boys had a happy and loving home with two parents who loved them and each other very much. In 1995, the family moved to Johannesburg as it provided better work opportunities for Tony. While there, Kiernan attended St. John's College. In 2002, when he was 14, he formed a hip-hop group called Entity with two of his friends called Greyhound and vice versa. This was when Kiernan started using the stage name, AKA. The group had a hit song called Touch and Go that made waves in South Africa in 2005. In fact, the group did so well that they even received a nomination for a Cora Award in the Best African Hip Hop category. Entity disbanded in 2006 when Kiernan was 18 and he went on to study sound engineering. His musical career is much inspired by his father, who also likes to sing and perform. In that same year, Kiernan co-founded the production collective, the Ivy League, alongside two other members. The Ivy League made production credits for several artists, including Kulichana, Prokid, Loiso and the Bala Brothers. AKA had a passion for creating music and on the back end, he started working on his own solo projects when he realized that his passion laid more with performing and not producing. In 2007, after 20 years of marriage, Lynn and Tony divorced and Tony moved back to Cape Town while Lynn, Stefan and Kiernan stayed in Johannesburg, although the family remained extremely tight-knit and Tony played a huge part in the boys' lives even with the physical distance between them. In 2009, AKA released three singles, In My Walk, I Do, and Mistakes. And on 28 July 2010, he released I Want It All, which would be the lead single from his debut solo studio album, Alter Ego. The album also pre-released two singles, which were All I Know and Victory Lap. Victory Lab was extremely successful as it topped South African local radio charts week after week after week. His debut album 
Alter Ego, was released on 23 August 2011 and was certified gold for its commercial success and won several accolades, including the 2011 Metro FM Awards for Best Hip Hop Album and aka won Best Male Artist of the Year at the 2012 South African Music Awards. AKA's star was on the rise. He was booked to perform not only in South Africa, but all over the African continent and collaborated with several artists from South Africa, Ghana and Nigeria, including Burna Boy, Kulichana and Whiskid. He has opened the stage for internationally renowned acts such as Neo, Kanye West, Kid Cudi, as well as Rick Ross when they performed in South Africa. In 2012, 24-year-old AKA was touring and promoting his album, and he performed at a music event in Botswana, where he would meet then 29-year-old DJ Zinghle, who is a South African DJ, producer, media personality, and businesswoman. AKA allegedly told her to stop being stuck up and go out with him and his crew. The two went out, and they ended up being stuck in traffic. And what really got her attention was that when he saw she had been called and agitated, he took off his jacket and gave it to her to put on. The two immediately clicked and ended up staying up and talking until 4am the next morning and enjoyed each other's company so much that they even went out for breakfast together afterward. The two soon started seeing each other more and became a steady item, but they weren't making it public just yet as it was something that they wanted to keep themselves, with their lives being so public. Zinghle went on to meet Gyanan's mom after six months of dating, and her and Lynn ended up becoming very close and great friends up to today. AKA released his second album, titled Levels, on 30 June 2014. The album was supported by four singles, Jealousy, Control, Congratulate, and Ran Josie. The album was certified platinum in 2014 and double platinum in 2018. This album gave AKA the unique distinction of being the first South African rapper to go platinum with an album mainly recorded in English. It was also around the same time as this release that we started seeing more glimpses on social media of the relationship between AKA and DJ Zinghle. In January 2014, the couple went on a holiday and posted loved up pictures and people soon started speculating whether Zinghle was expecting AKA's baby. And on the 4th of February of 2015, the couple confirmed that they were in fact expecting a baby that was due in July of that year. The couple welcomed their daughter, Cairo Owetu Forbes into the world on 8 July 2015 and Kiernan was right by Zinclair's side for all of it. Proud parents to their newborn baby girl. But behind the scenes, not all was as happy as it seemed. In September of 2015, Zinclair launched a blog and released the following statement on her website that read, I have recently been confronted with a situation that forced me to think really hard about the kind of woman that I want to become and the kind of legacy I want to leave behind. A week before our daughter was born, I found out about an affair between Kiernan, the father of my child, and Punang Mateva. I also received confirmation of all rumors through an honest conversation which I had with Kiernan, who confirmed that the affair had been going on for over five months. She also stated that she will always respect AKA for his honesty and said that she had found peace with his choice, implying that he chose Bonang over her. DJ Zinkle said she felt compelled to release the statement after the continued public display of his and Bonang's relationship, as well as the commentary surrounding it. She said she will continue to support AKA in his role as the father of her child and that she sees him as a member of her extended family. Bonang is a very famous South African, award-winning television presenter, 
radio personality, actress, social media personality, and businesswoman, known as Queen Bee to her fans. It seemed that her and Zinkle had been friendly with the two regularly posting comments on each other's social media posts, which made it even worse. However, after Zinkle spoke out about the affair, aka and Bonang swiftly denied the accusations. But Zinkle and aka ended up separating. But they remained dedicated to being present in their daughter's life and started what would become a co-parenting relationship that any separated couple that share a child should aspire to. Not all that long after Zinkle announced the breakup, pictures started leaking of Bonang and aka out in public, and they soon became South Africa's new power couple. On the 2nd of December 2016, aka released his lead single, The World Is Yours, from his third studio album, but the release of this album would be delayed. So in the meantime, he collaborated with associated act Anati in composing the album Be Careful What You Wish For. The album was released on 28 July 2017 with a positive response from critics. It was supported by three singles, Ten Fingers, Don't Forget To Pray and Holy Mountain. AKA also pre-released songs including Cypher's Song, Star Signs and Sweet Fire in supporting the release of his third album, Touch My Blood. By 2017, Bonang and AKA were two years into the relationship and things seemingly started to go downhill. The couple had a very public breakup in February of 2017, when AKA, also known as Super Mega to his fans, that are dubbed the Mega C, tweeted on his account that he and Queen Bee were over. On Friday the 17th, he tweeted that he had enough of the bullshit and advised men to never love their women more than they love them. Then on the next day, he tweeted that he loved Bonang and that he could be a little bit crazy and intense sometimes. And he said that they were good and back on track. Bonang, on the other hand, had been very coy about what exactly happened. She had spent the weekend with her best friend, dining out and uploading videos to her Instagram account while looking completely unbothered. On the Sunday night, she finally decided to speak out, tweeting aka that their relationship won't be the same after he sweets. But they seem to be back on track, but not for all that long. By the end of 2017, the couple called it quits for good, with neither spilling the deets on exactly why they had broken up. But AKA definitely threw some shade for Nang's way. In an interview, he stated that he invests too much in love, and that the collapse of his relationship with Queen Bee made him realize that. He said that his healing began when it became apparent that she didn't miss him, stating, I definitely missed her. I missed being with her and laughing with her. And when I realized she didn't miss me, I had to let go. She made me not miss her. Probably one of the oddest posts from the broken up pair was when AKA went to Twitter detailing finding rocks in his cupboard, stating, you think you know someone until you unpack all their shit and find rocks that up in a plastic bag in your bedroom cupboard. I'm not talking about bath salts, I'm talking the type of rocks you pull out of a river. What are they doing wrapped up in my bedroom? I don't know. I never thought I would end up feeling so bitter about love. When he was asked about this in an interview, he said, I was looking through my stuff in the house and cleaning out the closet after the breakup when I found them in the bedroom. It was creepy and weird, almost ritualistic and spiritual. I showed my friends and they told me to get rid of that creepy shit. Who put stones and crystals in a weird plastic bag in the closet? It was bizarre. Basically, it looked like he was accusing Bonang of some sort of witchcraft. In 2018, he released a track called Beyonce that included the lyrics. When I left my baby mama, I thought you'd be my soulmate. You were a bomb babe, but now I'm talking to a bambe. I just can't compete with all your DMs and your airbrush. I could tell you super quick with three up. Waited two years just to see you with your weave off. 
Tell me what that says about your character. He was effing me when I was busy paying damages. Baby mama stressed out. Everyone felt that this was clearly a diss track aimed at Bonang. Through all of this, she, however, kept rather quiet, only stating, I miss nothing, or I don't know, maybe he was funny, I guess. That's it. AKA did not stay all that tattered and in pieces though. In early 2018, pictures started surfacing of AKA and DJ Zinkle out in public again together, and rumors started doing the rounds that the former couple and parents were back together. AKA stated that they were spending time together as a family, but they were not romantically involved. This was also around the time that he finally admitted that he and Bonang did in fact have an affair while Zinkle was pregnant. More and more pictures of AKA and Zinkle together were surfacing and people were asking, are they or aren't they? But it was soon confirmed by the couple that they were in fact back together. So they and their daughter went on several family trips and they seemed to be really putting in the effort to make their relationship work. During April of 2018, Kiernan was featured on WWE during a live event in Cape Town and Johannesburg, South Africa. Elias, you and I are not a match. I got people in the back who can kick your ass. Elias, you don't even stand a chance. Call me Braun Strowman, cause you gonna get these AKA's third studio album, Touch My Blood, was finally released on 15 June 2018, after quite a long delay since the release of his lead single in 2016. The album, however, was a big hit with the Megacy and was certified platinum and later certified double platinum by 2019. His sixth album, single, Fella in Versace, featuring Kid Dominant, received much higher commercial success compared to the other singles that was previously released from the album. In January of 2020, a video surfaced of AKA kissing another woman in a restaurant and people thought that he was back to his old ways, cheating on Zinkle again. But they both confirmed that they had in fact broken up in December of 2019, where after AKA said, that he went on a boy's trip to recenter himself. Social media sleuths went out of their way to try and figure out who the girl that AKA was kissing was, and it soon came out that it was Annele Tembe, also known as Nelly, who was the first non-celebrity that AKA had been seen dating. Anele Tembe was born on 11 October 1999 to a very affluent South African family in Durban. Her father is renowned business mogul Moses Tembe, who is the chairman of Pumelela Gaming and Leisure Limited, and her mother was the late Lulu Msumi Tembe, who passed on in 2004 following an illness. After her mother's untimely death, Anele and her two siblings were raised by their father until he remarried. Princess Ntando Yesizwe, who is the daughter of the 8th king of the Zulu nation, King Goodwill Zuelatini. This marriage bore two more children. It was said that Anele was extremely close to her father and her older brother even called her a total daddy's girl. After graduating high school, Anele took a gap year where she fell in love with cuisine from all over the world, and she told her father that her dream was to become the first South African woman to open a Michelin star restaurant. After 18 months of studies, in 2019 she graduated from the Jackie Cameron School of Food and Wine, 
and opened her own kitchen at Sibaya Casino and Entertainment Kingdom in Durban. It's not exactly clear how Nelly and AKA met, but by the end of January 2020, 32-year-old AKA and 21-year-old Anele went public with their relationship and were seen all over spending time with each other, with AKA posting pictures and videos of them together. In March of 2020, COVID-19 spread across the world and South Africa was put on lockdown, which meant that artists could not perform and people were required to quarantine at home to prevent the spread of the virus. Although their relationship was still fairly new, AKA and Anele decided to quarantine together. AKA said that this made them fall in love in a whole different way as they got to know each other on a much deeper level. In April 2020, Forbes alongside vodka brand Cruise, that he had already been associated with quite some time, launched a watermelon flavored drink with his initials on the bottle. But it didn't remain all cuddles and googly eyes in this couple's relationship as the first signs of problems came when in November 2020, the police were called to the couple's residence by neighbors who said that the couple were yelling and screaming at each other the couple was subsequently taken to the police station, where both said that the other was violent towards them, but in the end, they decided not to press charges against each other. Two weeks later, news articles with photos came out, noting that a famous South African hip-hop artist's girlfriend, neither who were named at the time, had threatened to jump from the roof of a Durban Hilton building, and soon videos started circulating. Luckily, the specific woman was convinced to get off of the roof and was taken to a psychiatric facility for further treatment. It later came out that this was in fact Anele Tembe. She had been taken to a psychiatric facility to receive treatment and she was also then put on medication. On 6 November 2020, AKA's extended play Bova Mania was released. The EP was supported by four singles, Energy, Python, Monuments and Cross My Heart. At the 10th ceremony of the South African Hip Hop Awards, he received a nomination for Artist of the Decade. On the 21st of February 2021, Anele Tembe and Kiernan Forbes got engaged, with Anele posting on her social media. 21.02.21 on this day, I said yes to the love of my life and best friend. Words cannot describe how grateful I am to be your life partner. Even through the highs and the lows, you have stood by me. And I thank you, Kian and Jared Forbes, for loving me wholeheartedly and never giving up on us. Cheers to the beginning or forever. For life, boo. AKA also posted this to his feed. Interesting post for just getting engaged. Maybe that's just me. At the end of March 2021, the Forbes and Tembe families got together to finalize the Lobola negotiations. Everything went well and the couple shared some photos here and there of the weekend that ended with Kiernan paying Lobola for his fiance. For those of you that don't know, Lobola is basically like a bride price. It is a milestone in which a prospective husband or the head of his family gives the head of the future wife's family property to show gratitude for being allowed to marry their daughter. It also symbolizes unity and harmony between the bride and groom's families. Everything looked to be on the up and up for the couple, but what people didn't know was that behind closed doors, everything was not as it seemed and the couple allegedly had many issues to work through, including insecurity on both sides. Two weeks after Lobola negotiations were finalized, the couple traveled to Cape Town, where AKA would be performing at a club called Ayep Yep. The couple wanted to take the getaway and the break to work on the issues, as the week that they had had been very hard. On 
on the 10th of April, the couple arrived at the Pippa Club Hotel and dropped off their luggage and set off to the V&A waterfront to do some shopping and have lunch with some friends and then they went back to the hotel to get ready for AKA's performance. This was still in COVID times which meant that clubs closed at 12. But the couple posted some video from the night and they looked to be having a great time. They left the club around 11 and were back at the hotel in their room by 11.30 pm. They had a great time that day and decided to revisit some of the issues, but instead of them working them out, it escalated into a much larger argument. The argument seemingly continued into the next morning of the 11th of April. According to AKA, the argument got very heated and he decided to remove himself from the situation and decided that he would rather get another room. But he mistakenly took Anele's phone instead of his when he left, so he went back to the room to get his phone and give his back to her. He said that when he got back to the room, the argument started up again and Anele started threatening to jump out of the window. He stated that he then called security for assistance and decided that he would once again remove himself from the situation until security arrived. So he went to the bathroom and when he returned from the bathroom, Anele was nowhere to be seen. He immediately heard a neighbor screaming and realized that Anele had in fact jumped as she had threatened to do. And he looked down to see her lying outside the hotel in the street. Mm, um, so I just saw this, I just started screaming, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Um, it's it's uh, something that's ingrained in my mind forever. It's not easy to think about, it's not easy to talk about. Um, I remember going out onto the balcony, there was a, by the time I had made it out to the balcony, there was a gentleman to my left, who was already on his balcony, uh, just to the side and one up. So I looked out and I looked down and as I kind of reeled back, um, he was standing there. Um, I don't remember saying it, but I just started screaming, oh my God, oh my God, and just losing my mind. And as soon as, uh, you know, I, I kind of got, made sense of what was happening, it maybe after about 10 seconds or 15 seconds or so, uh, I ran next door uh, to where my friend was, started banging on his door, just hysterical, and he opened the door, he dragged me up off the floor, and that's where the whole nightmare began. Everything just started moving, and people, and my friend went down uh, to, to downstairs, and I wanted to go down, um, but they said, no, don't, you know. Uh, Do you stay in a room? No, I was next door, so I'd ran out of our room next door to, mm -hmm. to my friend's room. And um, 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 they had said she was still alive. So that made me go even crazier because um, I had seen her. So I started thinking, there's no way, we were staying on the 10th floor. There's no way she could have survived that. Why are you telling me this? Like, you're only messing with me. Don't tell me something like that, you know. And then uh, I stayed in the room. Um, and then they kept me up there. And then at some point, uh, my friend came up and I could just see. And he just looked at me, just shook his head like this. And I just, I just broke down and the medics worked on Anele, but unfortunately after around 20 minutes, she had passed away. The first person that AKA spoke to on the phone was his dad, Tony Forbes, who was based in Cape Town and he immediately came to the hotel. The police soon after also arrived and took AKA to the police station to take his statement and to also check his body for any marks, etc. And after this, he was let go. He decided to go to another hotel to stay there, as he couldn't face going back to the paper club after what had just happened there. AKA was out of it with grief and disbelief that this had happened, that his fiancée, 
the person he was going to be spending the rest of his life with, was gone in such a tragic and traumatic way. His father took it upon himself to phone Anele's family to tell them what had happened, and they would arrive to Cape Town the next day to identify Anele's body. They then went to meet with AKA, and he initiated the conversation with her father about the argument that they had on the night, which led to what he said was Anele jumping. AKA stated that Moses, her father, was visibly upset and sad, so they did not get to engage on the topic any further, but they passed their condolences to each other. The family went on to arrange for a week of mourning and decided that they would arrange Anele's funeral. Kiernan stated that he had asked them to be able to speak at the funeral as he had written a eulogy for her, and that when he got to the funeral, he had expected to see his name on the program, but he was shocked to see that it was in fact not there. The second thing he was shocked about was when a family friend read her father's statement, saying that Moses Tembe did not believe that Anele had in fact ended her own life and that she was never of the mindset where she had wanted to take her own life. So why are we here? We're here because Anele is no more. How is Anele no more? That's a question. In answering the vexing question, I must hasten to state the obvious, that I wasn't there when Anele met her fate last Sunday. I neither seek to attack any person, nor cast aspersions, nor create suspicions, nor stigmatize any mental condition. However, I cannot allow an unfortunate narrative go unchallenged, a narrative that acts me to no end as a father, which is maliciously pervade in some circles, that Anele, my daughter, was a chronically suicidal or had suicidal tendencies. All I can say is that until she turned 21, Anele wouldn't consider taking her own life as a solution. Not a single member of my family, Anele's family, will have ever associated Anele with suicide. It never arose. Living would not have been Anele's challenge. On the contrary, Anneli loved herself so much, she wanted to live more rather than less. As Anneli's father, I hereby state categorically that Anneli was neither suicidal nor did she commit suicide. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to understand the forces that put us in a situation that we find ourselves. Of course, we must, as a matter of extreme priority, deal with the scourge that bedevils our youth. Alcohol, which is overused, and drugs. Especially if we envisage our youth contributing meaningfully to our nation building and economic development efforts. Fellow South Africans, we had better wake up and smell the coffee. We have a serious problem with substance abuse and add to that other social ills. Then we are in a crisis. The third thing that shocked him was when the police minister spoke at the funeral. Someone that didn't even know the family or Anele herself. To him, this was a signal that something wasn't right and that it seemed like they were in fact suspecting him of having something to do with Anele's passing. On the 8th of May, AKA released the following statement that had fans kind of confused, but the next day it would become clear why he felt the need 
to do just that. When videos, disturbing videos which are so short clips of here surfaced, showing some of the toxicity that was extremely visible in the couple's relationship. It's not clear where this video came from, but AKA said that he knew or that he had his suspicions. Look at all of this. All of this. Look at all of this. Look at all of this. We got somebody here under the influence. Try to jump off the balcony. My eardrums are ringing. I think I burst my eardrum. I have a witness that witnessed that I did not fight back. And there is no fighting back from my side. This is how it looks. So when we go to court, this is what I want people to see. Thank you. There's one video that shows AKA breaking down a door to get through the 22 year old Anele who was hiding out in the bedroom. Allegedly, all of this occurred in their Bryanston home on the 13th of March. There were also pictures released of Anele with a swollen face. Let's just say that these videos and pictures put a lot of suspicion on AKA and their relationship with people wondering whether this had in fact been a DV relationship. When these videos and pictures started coming out, AKA decided to do an interview telling his side of the story or what he said is the truth. He said there isn't his truth or her truth, there is only the truth. He indicated that him and Anele had a passionate relationship and that their relationship had issues, but that he did not agree that their relationship had been toxic or abusive. I think as a couple, we did have a very tumultuous relationship. Um, I put that down to being about passion. We're both very passionate people. We passionately loved each other very, 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 very much. That is why we wanted to build our whole lives together. But I think passion goes both ways um, in, in this case. Disagreements that we had could be quite intense. Um, and on that day when we, when we were speaking, it was about a variety of issues in our, in our relationship. Issues that I, I don't feel I really want to lay bare because Anela is not here to speak for herself. Anela is not here to give her side of, of the story. But what I can tell you is, it was like any other relationship in which there were problems and issues and insecurities and just just things that, that, that people, you know, especially with our life, me being in the public eye, and that, you know, we're going on in our relationship. But I know that what I am not is an abuser. I am not somebody who would abuse Anele because I treated her like gold. She was my everything and still remains my everything. Was your passion violent? In that moment, definitely. In that moment, I took it too far. In that moment, I scared her. In that moment, I wasn't the man I was supposed to be towards her. Had you ever hit her? No. What, apart from the incident with the door, what other violent, maybe not you hitting her, but what other violent incidents do you recall between the two of yourself? Define violent. Where, for example, there's breaking of doors, there's the trashing of a room, oh, that type of in stuff. the house or at a hotel. It had, it had happened before. It had happened before on both sides. Um, myself and Anele, like I said, were, were very stubborn, very steadfast um, and could be quite volatile. Were there drugs involved? Drugs involved in our relationship? Did the two of you uh, take drugs either together or as individuals? Well, for me, when it comes to the issue of drugs, I've been in the, in the entertainment industry, in the music industry for 15, 
nearly about 15, nearly 20 years now. Um, have I tried drugs before? Yes, I have. I can say that without question. Um, on the part of Anele, like I said, Anele is not here and I'm not going to speak and delve into that on Anele's part because my job is to protect her memory, my job is to protect her legacy, but I can only speak for myself. Let's get to the, the day of the funeral. Um, Anele's father had a written tribute that was read out by a close family friend. Um, in that tribute, he then says that she was not suicidal, he did not know her to be suicidal, without saying that she had been on drugs, then makes a point about young people and drug abuse. Mm -hmm. Why would he, do you think he made that comment? <clears throat> well, I, I can't speculate as to why he would say those things, culturally, in terms of the family as well. It's, it's, it's taboo, you know. Um, it's a no-go area. It, it's something that won't happen to our child. It's something that, that couldn't have happened. Um, but I also know at the same time that he was well aware that Anele was on medication. We spoke about it many times. We had spoken about her sometimes getting off her medication, not being on her medication. Um, we had spoken after she had spent a week in uh, uh, a Seiko, um, uh, psychiatric hospital in, in Umslanga. Mm -hmm. So he, he was well aware that she had stayed there for a week. Um, he was aware because me and him spoke uh, 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 at length about her side attempt in Durban. He was the one who picked her up from hospital. I will link the full interview down below for you and you can decide for yourself what you think of what he said. During this interview, he also made it known that he did not have any contact with the Tembe family. At the end of the video, the Tembe's included a statement. I think that most of us can understand why the Tembe's don't really want to have a relationship with Kiernan. Their relationship seemed to be extremely tumultuous and after seeing the videos and pictures that later came out and then knowing that he was with his daughter when she allegedly jumped must have been so painful and hard for her family to digest. So I can understand it to a matter of degree from their point as well and I can also understand that Kiernan loved her very much and he thought that he was gaining a whole new family. And it must be hard not having that connection to her anymore, which is her family. But even with all of this going on, AKA's life slowly started going back to normal. Well, the new normal without who he called the love of his life. He slowly started performing again, as well as recording. And around seven months after Anele's death, he and Nadia Nakai started slowly teasing that they had been dating, posting each other on their social media or posting photos of them on holiday at the same place, etc. Nadia Nakai Lamini is a Zimbabwean-born South African rapper and television personality. The two musos had met more than 10 years ago when she was working for Icon magazine and interviewed AKA. But they only started dating when they started working on his soon to be released album Mass Country together. And things sort of slowly just progressed from there. Many people disapproved of this with him starting a relationship with a new woman what they said was so soon after the death of the woman he called the love of his life. But people close to the couple stated that Nadia actually saved AKA's life, as he had been on an extremely downhill path after Anele's passing. On the 11th of April 2022, one year after Anele's passing, AKA posted the above on his Instagram, in remembrance of her. Behind the scenes, it was said that the Tembe family was pushing to have AKA prosecuted for Anele's death. In fact, an inquest was opened after Anele's death as is normal with a suspicious death and it had never been closed, 
which meant that the police had not been all that satisfied that her death had in fact been of the ending it herself type situation. But the MPA stated that they did not have enough evidence to take the case forward or to charge Kiernan with Anele's death. The team base then decided, well, if you don't say you have evidence, then we will bring the evidence to you. They then submitted a letter through their lawyers and it stated the following that they said was evidence. The first thing was the call that Forbes made to the reception desk. They said it was made after Anele had already landed on the ground. The video footage that captured her fall records a time that is prior to the call that Forbes made to the reception desk. The evidence in the form of the record of a call and video footage which are contained in the docket were shockingly ignored. The receptionist is easily contradicted by that, they say. The second thing. The family also stated that investigators had ignored a statement by a crucial witness that was staying in the room next to the couple, who stated that he had heard an argument in the rapper's room between a man and a woman. The family said that during the argument, the woman, who later turned out to be Anele Tembe, was heard desperately asking the attacker, being a male, to leave her alone. Moments thereafter, the witness heard Anele Tembe drop to the ground. This man was also the one to then administer CPR on Anele. The third thing, the family also said that blood had been found in the hotel room, which indicated that there had been an assault on Anele prior to her death. The scratch marks on Forbes' body, specifically at the back, were scratch marks of defensive wounds in an upward direction, indicating to them that Forbes was carrying Anele on his shoulders while she attempted to defend herself. They say that the scratch marks are indicative that Forbes threw her over the balcony. This is what the letter reads as. They also stated that Anele had landed at a distance that is consistent with a person who was pushed. She landed approximately five and a half meters away from the building, whereas if she jumped on her own, they say she would have landed approximately two meters away from the building. They also indicated that there had been no fingerprints on the balustrade of the balcony, which would have shown that she had climbed over the railing herself. They stated that the absence of such fingerprints demonstrates the fact that she was pushed or thrown over and didn't climb over herself. They also stated that the way that Kiernan had acted after his fiance jumped was extremely unbecoming, stating that he did not attend to his injured fiance, who remained alive for approximately 20 minutes. He did not go to perform CPR on her. Instead, a complete stranger cared enough to administer CPR and call emergency services in an attempt to save Anele Tembe's life. Instead, what they say is happened, has happened is that Forbes cleaned up the hotel room. There was blood found on towels. Forbes partied and drank at the hotel with his entourage following the passing of his fiance. The MPA, however, maintained that it had not been enough evidence to prosecute, aka on Anele Tembe's death. Allegedly, behind the scenes, the Tembes were still not satisfied. Life for AKA again went on. He started getting back to himself. He started recording his fifth studio album, that would be called Mass Country, and it was set to be released on 24 February of 2023. He released his lead song, Lemonade, in September of 2022. Everything also seemed to be going very well between him and Nadia, with the two spending Christmas together with AKA's family and also traveling together. AKA also started performing again a lot and stated that it was the first time that he felt like himself in two years. New Year 2023 rolled around and Kiernan celebrated his 35th birthday on the 28th of January. He posted on Instagram spinning it with Nadia and Cairo, with Cairo having baked him a birthday cake. 
he also set out on what he called his birthday tour, where he went around to different clubs to celebrate and perform. On the 10th of February 2023, AKA was set to perform at Hugo, a nightclub in Durban, as part of his birthday tour. Rumours have been doing the rounds that AKA had been warned not to return to Durban, which was where Anele and her family had been from. Something that cannot really be proven, as they were in fact just rumours. But nonetheless, AKA and his entourage arrived in Durban on the 10th. AKA posted several pics and videos of himself in Durban in various locations. And he ended up tagging each of them. One of them being at a barber shop that was owned by a friend of his and he allegedly he wanted to help promote this business. Next, they also went to Wish, a restaurant on Florida Road, also owned by a friend and he tagged his location again and posted it to social media. Next door, his friend Tabelo Tibbs Motsuane, a long-time friend of his, was having some drinks with his other friends and he saw that AKA was actually just next door and he decided to go and greet him. Tabelo was an extremely well-known chef, entrepreneur, businessman, brand strategist and internet personality, as well as AKA's former manager. Tabelo was just about to go in as the group came out and they met each other on the sidewalk outside where AKA and Tibbs would be seen hugging each other, extremely happy to see one another. Sadly, this great loving moment between these two friends would be interrupted by utter and complete chaos that would end in two tragedies. As you can see from the footage, as the friends are hugging, you can see a man in the distance walk up slowly toward where AKA and Tibbs are standing and another man standing on the top. The man in the white approaches AKA and shoots him at almost point blank, where AKA immediately falls to the floor and sadly passes away. Simultaneously, the other man at the top also shoots, hitting Tibbs in the crossfire. Tibbs fought for his life, but sadly passed away before medics could arrive. The CCTV footage of AKA and Tibbs' murder soon went viral as it was shared all over social media and internet sleuths were coming up with all sorts of theories and very soon afterward the Tembes were blamed for hiring hitmen to kill AKA. It caused so much noise over the internet that Moses Tembe had to come out with a statement saying that neither he or his family were involved in AKA's murder. There were also others that speculated that friends of AKA had something to do with his murder. And they completely tore apart the CCTV footage looking for clues. The family of AKA soon after released a statement after hearing the news. A memorial service was held for Tibbs on Thursday the 16th of February and on Friday the 17th of February a public memorial was held for AKA. It was a complete show of love for Super Mega. Nadia was really struggling throughout and what really touched everyone's heart is when a lot of comfort came from Zinkle and Cairo. But it wasn't all sad and teary. It was a huge celebration of Kian and Jared Forbes' life and all that he accomplished in such a short amount of time. And it just really showed what an impact he made on so many people's lives. On the Saturday, the families asked for privacy as they buried their sons in private ceremonies. These deaths were a complete shock to the country as AKA has been one of its biggest stars. And he was still on the rise and calls for justice for AKA and Tibbs were actioned. As this looked like a clear hate style murder that was aimed at AKA directly. Nadia and Zinkle also soon after the memorial released their own statements. 
Nadia has also released several statements afterwards. And I think we should just all send out our love and support to her, as you can see that she's really struggling, and she really loved AKA very much. It has now been more than a month after AKA and Tibbs' murder, and no one has been arrested to date. But the police minister, Beggy Kele, had said that there had been some progress on the case. On the 7th of March, he stated that there are things that he's not meant to say, but that one of the things that he can say is that they have collected many cell phones that were working. They downloaded them and all that kind of things. They were trying to patch and knit things together and that he was happy with the progress that they were making. But the Megacy have not been impressed and said that they are tired of the Mzanzi police force's failure to solve Super Mega's case. That is where we will end it for today. I will keep you updated as this case progresses. We have lost a true star. A man loved by many. And a shining light that has been snuffed out too soon. Thank you so much for watching if you've gotten this far. Remember to leave a like and subscribe if you've not done so already. I really appreciate your support so very much. Until next time, stay safe out there, take care of yourself and take care of each other. Bye!